Today we're making a bench out of wood, concrete, and steel that appears to be floating above the desert, but actually it's just cantilevered. This video is sponsored by Cabot and it's all about their 2024 trend of the year retreat, or as the brand puts it, it's time to celebrate the joy of missing out and just embrace a simple and slower lifestyle in your outdoor spaces. This bench is comprised of a concrete foundation, a steel frame with wood and some stone that fits within that frame. Let's start with the steel. For the steel, I'm using one and a half inch square tube and some three inch angle steel. I cut the square tube to length using my angle grinder. The angle steel that I had was a little rusty, so I had to brush it off before cutting it into 10 foot lengths. I welded the tubes together using my mag switch clamps to make sure I got nice right angles and I started by making a rectangular frame. Now I'm worried about the frame twisting so I started adding in some crossbars which are also going to serve as the connection point to the concrete block. It was fun to get back into welding and it's really incredible how quickly you can make really strong structures. I'm going to use one and a half inch thick cedar decking for the wood infill. So I lifted up the frame and then placed the three inch angle steels on either side. I welded these to the frame, which will give me some additional strength, but more importantly, they're going to hide the edges of the cedar and give me a real crisp thin line from the outside. I've learned the hard way that continuous welding from one end to the other can result in bent steel from all of the heat deformation. So I started by tacking things in and then going back in and laying in some nice solid three to four inch welds. I did have to grind some of the middle welds flat just to make sure that the wood deck boards will be able to sit flush onto the steel. On the ends, I just welded in a three inch flat bar to create a clean looking end cap. I drilled holes for anchor bolts that will hold the steel to the concrete, but I want the bolts to not poke into the wood. So I had to cut some access holes so that the hardware will sit inside the steel tubes. I started the holes with conventional steel drill bits, but these step bits are way better, which is good because I have six holes to drill and therefore half inch anchor bolts. I need the holes to line up with the bolts in the concrete, so I clamped down a piece of plywood to use as a template and then marked the holes directly onto the plywood before drilling holes through that plywood and inserting and bolting the anchor bolts to the plywood. The vertical support is going to be a white concrete cube, and I'm just making this mold out of some old recycled melamine held together with some pocket holes. I've had good results using pocket holes to hold together concrete forms, but there's a lot of weight going into this. So I did make an outer perimeter using some two by fours. This will also help me attach this mold down to the concrete footing underneath the ground. For the footing itself, I'm just using two by eights to make a six foot long frame that will serve as the foundational base. This cantilever design is going to load the concrete in both tension and compression. So I want to make sure to use adequate reinforcement. Most people just cut rebar and then use wire to hold it together, but I already had the welder out. And for me, it's a little faster just to weld everything together. It also ensures that everything will hold together nicely when I move this steel rebar contraption from one workshop to the new house. I picked a nice spot in my new yard and then started digging. For footings like this, I like to do one shovel width around the exterior of the form. That usually gives me enough room to pound in stakes and then drive in screws from the outside. I want the top of the concrete footing to be about four to eight inches beneath the surface of the ground, which worked out well because the ground started getting really hard once I got about 13 inches down. I didn't need much compaction since the ground was so hard, so I just started adding in a bed of gravel. This is going to serve as my drainage layer underneath the concrete, and I made sure to tamp it down nice and even. Now I can place the 2x8 form, drive in some steel stakes, secure the 2x8s to the steel stakes,
and break up some dobies, which are just little concrete cubes with wire in them, so that I can set the rebar on top of these little guys to keep it up off the gravel. Now I'm going to use a real strong structural concrete for the footing, but an ornamental white concrete for the vertical component. So I do want some of that gray structural concrete to come up into the middle. So I just use a scrap piece of linoleum to make sort of a cylindrical form in the middle of what will be a white concrete cube. For the foundation, I'm using a mix of Quickcrete 5000 and Quickcrete crack resistant concrete mix, which are both really strong structural grades of pre-bagged concrete. I mixed it until it was the consistency of lumpy oatmeal and shoveled it into the form. I did make sure to vibrate it in to try to get it all around the rebar and make sure it's settled in without too many air gaps. But this is all going to be hidden underground though, so it doesn't have to be too pretty. The idea for this cylinder that's going to go up into the bottom of the white concrete cube is just so that I don't get slippage between these two separate concrete pores. I let the concrete cure for a couple days and then stripped off that linoleum mold so that I could place that big melamine cube and get it ready for the white concrete. I left the 2x8 formwork in place just so I can screw this melamine box right down to it. I'm making my own white concrete by mixing the local sand that I rinsed off to remove all the organic dirt from with some white Portland cement. I get 90 pound bags of this cement for just under 20 bucks right now. But rinsing all the sand is a decent amount of work. I mix it at a 5 to 1 ratio of sand to Portland cement. And once again, I add water and mix it until it's the consistency of lumpy oatmeal. This doesn't have the grades of aggregate and fibers that the, that the structural concrete did. But I'm using a lot of rebar and that overlaps with all of these anchor bolts. So I should be pretty good. I waited a few more days to let everything cure, then stripped away the melamine mold, unbolted the anchor bolts so I could get that piece of plywood off, and there you have it, a nice, solid, just off-white concrete cube. Now I can fill in the hole so you don't see that footing and you just see the white cube coming out of the ground. I cut a bunch of pieces of cedar 2x6s that will fit right within the steel frame. I gave them a quick sanding to 120 grit and then had to decide on which color Cabot stain I wanted to use. I tried three different Cabot products, the bleaching stain, which I'd use quite often, and their solid color acrylic stains in two different colors, desert sand and victory gray. The desert sand has a nice warm mustard color and the victory gray has just a hint of green, which I thought would look good with the landscape. The bleaching stain is one of my go-to finishes out here for outdoor projects, and I like that it shows a lot of the grain through the stain, but also gives you a sneak preview of what the wood will look like when it's been thoroughly bleached by the harsh desert sun. I stained three sample pieces to help me make the decision. I like them all, but ultimately I'm going to go with the lightest one so that the bench won't get too hot in the summer. I've used Cabot products for over 20 years and specified them a lot in my early days as an architect. These days I use them for everything for, from protection to controlling the color and amount of grain that I show with the wood. I spray painted the steel with some white Krylon spray paint in matte and then bolted the steel into place. The anchor bolts and nuts are all galvanized, which should protect them from corrosion. I use flat washers, lock washers, and a nut to secure the steel to the concrete. Now I can place the deck boards and even kind of like having a single stripe of a contrasting color here. But I also want to mix in a hard surface so I have a place to set a wine glass or a coffee cup. So I cut a piece of Arizona red sandstone. I did this with my angle grinder which didn't quite go all the way through but I was able to score it deep enough on both sides that I could just snap it off with a little coaxing from a hammer. Thank you. 
This 100 pound stone will also serve as a nice counterweight, but I did notice that the deck boards were sliding around a little bit, so I just cut some scrap so that I could screw these boards together with nice even 1 8 of an inch spaces in between. The length of the bench runs north to south, which makes it a great place to sit and watch either sunrises or sunsets. And you can also use it as a daybed if you want to do a little star watching. I really like this Cabot 2024 trend of the year retreat. The idea of the joy of missing out of just sort of means to me that sometimes it's good to do less and just enjoy a slower lifestyle where you can be grateful for some outdoor space. I'm gonna use this bench for my morning sketchbook sessions with a cup of coffee, but I'm sure there'll be some charcuterie boards laid out on that stone and along with some cocktails as well. But it's always nice to stay in. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks, bye.